We're in the Mathematical Art Exhibition. Anyone can submit. The majority of people are mathematicians, though some people are professional artists. We look for both aesthetic quality, craftsmanship, and also math content. This year we have 80 artists, about 120, 130 artworks, artists from all over the world. Well, art and math might seem different on the surface, but there are certainly similarities. I mean, both are about beauty and truth, I think. Um, when mathematicians look at the world around them, they see mathematics in places other people don't, don't see mathematics. Tree branching, for example, the, the trunk branches into a few main branches, those branch into smaller branches, those branch into smaller branches. So at different scales, the same sort of branching occurs. Basically, I photographed a small portion of a tree where there's a branching, and then I kind of distort that in Photoshop so you can fit smaller copies of that together. And the whole thing is built up from multiple copies of that one small photographic building block. In math, if you want to prove something really beautiful, you have to understand the structure. And the structure means that you understand the beauty of an object. And with that knowledge, you oftentimes can make a very, very important and deep proof. So that's why beauty matters tremendously in mathematics. I make crocheted hyperbolic surfaces. They are two-dimensional objects which curve in, in three-dimensional space. A hypersurface, it is visually immediately beautiful. It, it appeals to the heart without the mind necessarily needing to, to understand all the details. And that's cool. Many blossoms with waviness around the edges are in essence hyperbolic. So initially I crochet around a little circle. It's basically weed whacker line. I use the same number of stitches for many, many goings around. And then I increase for each going around by just one stitch. And then I increase by two. And then later I increase by more until I come to a point where I actually want to have it grow explosively into this blossom shape. Then I crochet an extra stitch for every seventh or eighth or ninth stitch. Since I have a daytime job, um, <laughs> I only crochet in the evenings, and so this takes me maybe a month per piece. It's just beautiful. I can't stop looking at it. Thanks. I'm Jesse Lewis Rosenberg, and I guess I'm a generative designer. So we're a studio that uses computer programs and techniques from sort of mathematics and computer science to grow forms computationally based on simulations of natural processes. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> it's a snapshot of a process. In terms of making it physical, we write a computer program that generates a 3D model, and then that model is materialized through 3D printing. I'm very interested in how do complex systems create patterns, but you can sort of look at this visually and have that same sort of sense of wonder. I think that that same sense of wonder is what drives the attraction to these pieces and the attraction to the systems behind them. I really love math, right? And so a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm there, you know, trying to explain to other people why math is like really cool, really dynamic, really sort of like this engaging sort of topic. And, you know, people sort of give me that look like I'm like that crazy person screaming about the end times there on the corner of the street, you know what I mean? But like this is an example of, you know, you don't need, you know, a bunch of 4,000 level classes to see why this looks cool. This is innately beautiful in and of itself. 